Well, hello guys. So today we're going to be doing our Disney Castle review. Yeah, this is the studio. This is actually my living room. So let's get into this. Let's start with the figures. And mini, and they do come in their new outfits. I definitely prefer Minnie's outfit over the one in the minifigure series. And Mickey's outfit is striking resemblance in what he looks like in the park. I do like Mickey's new pants and how there's printing on the toes. And also on the side of the legs. No printing on the back though, but there is this tail piece. Uh, for that and then Minnie has her new skirt piece and a new color and also with the dots and then on the back You can see also see all dual molded arms There is her back with also dual molded legs. Let's take a look at the ducks now that we take a look at the same as he is in the minifigure series But he's still a great figure with dual molded legs and also some printing on the arms pretty basic torso print though a uh, nice molded head with the hat and then there's the back with the tail piece, and then just the back of the hat mold, which is exclusive uh, to the, the figure, of course. And then Daisy's got the new bow and the new lavender uh, color. And then she's also the head piece, I believe, is actually different. And then, uh, and then she's got a pink torso with some dual molded arms and dual molded legs with some printing for the uh, shoes. And there's the back print which is still very nice, and let's take a look at the highlight figure of this. This is an exclusive character. This You can't find her as a mini doll or anything. You can only find her in this set. Uh, she does have printing for the shoes, and also very nice printing for the uh, torso, and she does have a little skirt piece right there. She does come with the uh, transparent, translucent green magic wand, and uh, no printing on the arms, but she does have a nice uh, exclusive head mold, her hair mold, and then a nice face, which is also exclusive. The back has these little frosted wings, which kind of covers up the back, but the back isn't that special. And then you have the back of the hair mold, and no uh, double-sided face either, but there you can see the back of the uh, skirt piece. And let's take a look. So now that's all for the figure. bottom of the castle, and then work our way around just the bottom half. Here you can see some opening gates that can close, but it is kind of tough to close, because you got to close them from the back. I do like these uh, la uh, lamps right here, but they do fall off very easily. And then you have these very nice and big uh, turrets that go all around. And you, as you'll see on the bottom, you'll see a lot of these stickers right here, which are very nice. And I just love how reflective the whole castle is. Now, uh, sorry about that. Uh, these builds right here for these part is, and like just whole section right here is very detailed. There's a lot of small pieces. Right here is a new printed piece. Uh, this is a sticker, and that is also a printed piece. And then as we move on up, you see the, you know, just how it looks. And then over here, uh, this is different from the one on the other side, because the other side, you know, is a full-on turret, and then it's also got this little add-on right there. And But this side is also special for the Princess and the Frog reference, with the two frogs and the crown. And uh, let's turn this castle around and look at the backside. Sorry about that, but before we turn the backside around, I want to look at the front of the tan part. And you can see it's very tall. This is the tallest part right here. And we do have a window down there, window right here. And you can actually see the curtains, those pink curtains from the little bedroom. I'll show you in a second. Right here is a little stud shooter that you can fire from the back, and that's supposed to be like fireworks. And as we work our way up, you can see the tower, and this part was very unique because, you know, it's the designer in the designer video he talked about. I spent a lot of time to get this right and I feel like he did. And that was just so fun to build because, you know, top of the castle and that's all great. Also, this uh, tan part can come off uh, very easily and I'll show you that uh, right after I take it off. I can't do it and hold the camera at the same time. As you can see, it can come off uh, quite easily and you gotta be careful. And then this little tower section Right here comes off from right here, so I'll do that There's right all now. Three of these sub assemblies right there, and you can see they're attached via jumpers. Of course, there's nothing to attach onto that. But let's take a look at this, uh, the inside of this part first. All right, so here's the bottom floor, and you can see back there is the gates, and you can easily close them from the back. And there's also a chandelier right there. And as you walk along, you get this nice tile use, using a great use of these Nexonite shields. I actually use those pieces a lot in this set. As we move along, we can see a nice grandfather clock, which can be easily removed. And then we have a knight on both sides, right there, right there. 
And there's also a little stack of shields, and those are stickers. And I forgot to mention that uh, piece on the grandfather clock is printed, so that's nice. Moving over here, and there's a very nice flower case. I like how they use the one ring down there. You can also see more of those shield pieces. Over here is the magic carpet and a lamp, which is very nice. And then as we move on up above this part, there's a little, uh, people are saying this is Robin Hood, but it's actually a reference to Brave because you can tell that by the instruction, it says it in the instructions, but also the little cookies, which are printed. And also this piece right here is an under printed part. And let's take a look at the, uh, sub assembly, the second level of, uh, you know, this stuff. floor, which is, goes on right above it. And as you can write, she, here, this is actually a kitchen from the Little Mermaid and a pumpkin from Cinderella. And this pumpkin is actually taking use of the uh, Headless Horseman pumpkin head from the Scooby-Doo line, which is pretty funny, if you ask me. And uh, then we move right along to the Beauty and the Beast room. This is one of my favorites. And you can tell it's Beauty and the Beast because it has a Lumiere build. Uh, and then the Enchanted Rose right there. And some very nice curtains that relate to the theme of the castle. And right here, you might think, well, that's just a normal spiral. But you can actually take it off, and inside is a little book. That is a printed part right there with the castle. And another printed uh, one by two tile that says, Once Upon a Time. And there's also the glass slipper and a little case. And then you can just put that back. So, and then it's just a little hidden feature compartment that I really like. And well, the only thing is that this set has so many callbacks to Cinderella, yet Cinderella doesn't even come to set. But that's okay. Uh, as we move along, we have a book. It had broomsticks and pails, obviously from Mickey's scene in Fantasia. And I do hope we get a Sorcerer's Princess Mickey piece. And by the way, this hat is actually the hat from uh, series 13, I believe. And uh, it does not fit on Mickey, unfortunately. But as we move right along, we have the spinning wheel from Sleeping Beauty. And the last room is this room, which is actually a reference to the uh, bedroom and the side of the castle, which was originally going to be Walt's uh, apartment. But they changed. But since he died, uh, it's now uh, invite-only hotel room. So very awesome there. And that's where the curtains show on the back on the front side. Let's take a look at that last spiral. There's that last spiral right there. And right here is where you can fire off those fireworks stud shooters, but also a chest referencing to Tangled because it has a hair comb, a hairbrush, and if I can get it out. Or, you know, I'll just show you. Scissors. Kind of got stuff everywhere. But, uh, so yeah, that's from Tangled. And then as we move up, we have a actual working mirror. And uh, you can see mirror... And there's also a apple from uh, Sleeping Beauty, and I do like how they use these reindeer antlers for detail on the mirror. And right here is just a little balcony to place one figure. So if you take like Mickey Mouse, you can place him there. Uh, and of course, this set was made to go along with the Disney uh, minifigure series, so I'm going to make it to where uh, I have the Disney figures all over this castle. Because I actually just completed the series. So yeah, let's take a look at that right now. See, I placed figures all over the place. And it's just very fun. And, uh, yeah, it's really cool looking with all the figures in there. And, of course, I did place Buzz and, uh, Lightyear out here just to make it look like they're flying. Uh, I just, you know, placed them on these little spikes. And, uh, yeah, very awesome. And let's move on to the final verdict. Honestly, no complaints at all. If I did have any, it would be just a nitpick, and that would be no Cinderella. But I do have a feeling that she's going to be included in the next minifigure series, which might be coming out in 2018, unless they cram in three next year. In 2017, because they already got the Batman one, and then the Ninjago movie one. But other than that, yeah, this is a perfect set, and I love it so much. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, see you guys next time. Bye!